there's something that I want to start drawing your attention to because this is what God's drawing my attention to. <laughs> In the past week, God spoke something kind of peculiar to me. It's going to sound peculiar to you, but that's okay. It's also kind of peculiar for God to reveal something in terms of a beast and different heads and things like that. So he's been known to do that. What he spoke to me is that India is batting cat eyes at Israel. You have never heard me speak about India until this point. Never, ever, ever. And why? Because God never spoke to me about India. I, they haven't even been on my radar at all. I'm not even necessarily, I'm not even sure how they fit into biblical prophecy at this point. But God knows what he's building in me right now. So I'm going to talk about what he's talked with me about and what I have seen as I've been investigating sort of what's going on and what he has exposed to me. Because I think that's more more important is what is God telling me? Th I mean, I don't think that's more important. That's everything. But what I'm trying to say is if you just go online and you start, uh, you know, investigating Modi or the BJP... You have no idea if the information that you're ingesting is true, and the likelihood of it being true is very, very slim. So as I've been researching and listening to what, you know, their own people are saying, not necessarily my establishment, which I was accused of. I was accused of listening to my own establishment. Uh, no, not so much. Like, that's never really been me. No, I'm listening to India's own people talk about what's really going on, and all of the fake news and propaganda that is being put out by the BJP. I'm also using common sense. Like when I hear something like um, India and the United States have this alliance, which is in the United States' own imagination, by the way, because India does not regard the United States in that way. But when I, when I read something or hear someone say something like, oh, the reason why they have this alliance is because they both believe in equality, I'm like... Uh, what? That's called common sense. Fundamental to their religion is a caste system, C-A-S-T-E, a caste system in which, by divine definition, people are not equal. Like little children are sitting on the side of the road in a pile of dirt with a bag of rice to eat for the day. Guys, you ever heard of someone called Mother Teresa who worked in Calcutta, who talked about her sorrow for the Indian people, even though she's got her own demons that she was dealing with. I mean, I'm not trying to elevate Mother Teresa, but I mean, are, are we now just like denying common sense for whatever narrative we pick on social media? This is, this is lunacy. I, I am not for one second gonna hear that and be like, oh yeah, oh India, yep, just like the United States. Nor do I think that you, the United States stands for equality. We have something called capitalism built into our system as well. That fundamentally makes people unequal. And also, everyone's not equal under God. Those who obey him have favor with him, and those who do not, do not. So I wasn't buying into the propaganda as being good to begin with, but I'm definitely not buying in it, into it as being true. The other thing that they're putting out is this peace, peace. And so, you know, Modi just went to the residence of Putin to lecture him about peace, which is ironic because he can say that to Putin, but does he say that to Israel? Israel, who, by the way, trained their own army at one point, trained India's army, let me be clear. Even though they keep putting out this propaganda that we're independent and autonomous, well, why did you, how did you hand your defense over to another nation to train them? You're not autonomous. They just implanted their ideology into your military. Because that's what happens when you're training military. 90% of their training is ideology. How many times are you going to teach someone to load a gun? 90% of their training is ideology, which includes desensitization to particular groups. So I don't know, India, Modi, how do you feel about peace when it has to do with Muslims? When it has to do with Pakistani Muslims or Palestinian Muslims? God gave us sense, guys. So when we're hearing these things, we shouldn't be buying into them, into this altruistic fake morality that they're trying to put out. I want to go back to what God said to me. He said, India is batting cat eyes at Israel. You haven't really heard a whole lot about India. India, suddenly there's all this propaganda and they've suddenly come on the scene and are attending all these summits and everything else because they want to be a leader. They want to be a world leader. That's their agenda. Now, when Daniel had the vision of these different beasts coming out of the sea, 
Daniel didn't then, you know, have the vision. It, he was, like, disturbed by it. He was perplexed by it. But he didn't go and, like, try to figure it out on his own. Gabriel had to explain the vision to him. And it's going to be always going to be the same thing. You're never, you're not going to, I can't go to Google and be like, what are cat eyes? I can't go to my own thoughts and be like, well, cats are really vigilant. They zero in on things. They hunt. What I did was I went to God and said, what does this mean? What, what, you woke me up out of my sleep to tell me this. What does this mean? Because you could have very well said that Israel is batting eye, eyelashes at excuse me, that India is batting eyelashes at Israel, I would have understood what you were saying. I would have understood flirtation. But there was something more that God was drawing my attention to. Something a little more intense than mere flirtation. And when I asked him about the cat eyes, what I saw and felt in the spirit was similar to something that you might see like on a Hollywood movie of Egypt. The kind of makeup that depicts like, you know, Egyptian makeup with like the you know, the cat eyes, real dramatic sort of prostitute eyes. And that's what he was drawing my attention to. This is not a mere flirtation. This is prostitution. And so for, for days now, I've been trying to understand and I keep going back to what he said to me because there have even been times where, um, where the narrative online can seem like, well, maybe it's Israel's prostituting it. Nope. India is batting cat eyes at Israel. So I have to keep going back to what God has said to me. And I have to know that God has said it to me. Because if I'm pursuing some delusion of my mind or something that I made up, like, what's the point? I have to know that God has said that to me. And I got to keep going to him and asking him, okay, what do you want to reveal to me today? And where does this stand in biblical prophecy, which he hasn't shown me yet, but he will. I know that he will, because I know this is coming from him. There are a lot of pieces that God has been showing me, a lot of things that I've been talking with you about in the last week. One of the things that he's been showing me is that the West is going to, that America is going to fall. America has to fall because it's the seventh kingdom and the eighth kingdom has to rise. And with all of those former kingdoms, they each fell to the other. And next year when the Antichrist rises, America will no longer be in power. And all of this is being set up right now. Now, I don't know exactly how it's being set up, but I do know that alliances are being formed in the East. Revelation 17 says that this seventh kingdom of the United States of the false prophet will remain for a little while. And Revelation 13 tells us exactly why. Why will it remain? What does Revelation 13 say? It says that the false prophet has two purposes. One is to testify to the Antichrist. The other is to set up the image of the Antichrist, which is counterfeit Israel. And so this love affair that the United States has had with Israel is coming to a close. And if you listen to the way that Israelis who are in Israel, how they speak about the United States, they're very resentful. They don't like their sugar daddy anymore. They're sick and tired of having to wait on us. They're losing patience quickly with Biden. And you know what? Anyone who's ever been in a relationship where one person is controlling, there's only so long that that person is able to control. That person actually needs you more than the person supposedly depending on them. And being in that position of power is always going to bite you in the butt. So Israel has taken every year since the 1970s, every year has taken millions of dollars from the United States. You guys have been paying for that. I've been paying for that. But they've grown resentful towards their sugar daddy. They don't like having the United States be in control of being able to tell them anything. Just give me my money and let me go drive in my Mercedes. Let me go shop. You know what? If only that was all Israel was doing with the money that we give them. But actually what they're doing is murdering, stealing, oppressing, and scapegoating. And this is what Modi and the BJP that he represents has learned from Israel. One of the things, anyway, is a little thing called propaganda. Scapegoating, deflecting in order to rise to power. What India has done to Pakistani Muslims is the same thing that Israel is doing right now to Palestinian Muslims, and is the same thing that Israel rose up to support India in the 1950s to defeat this thing that they call terrorism. And at the same time that Israel was supporting India, the United States betrayed India. I mean, I'm sure that they see that as a betrayal. The United States supported Pakistan. And then at the time that the United States was 
with the help of Pope John Paul II, bringing down the Berlin Wall, bringing down the power that was the USSR. India supported the enemy of the United States. So to say that India and the United States are like uh, besties or even allies is kind of a ridiculous thing to claim because they have a whole history of betraying one another. And I'm going to guess that that's left kind of a bad taste in one another's mouths. So what Netanyahu would do every time something happened, every time he messed up and was then exposed or people were turning on him for his bad behavior, because he has a whole history of bad behavior, he would manipulate, he would deflect, and he would scapegoat the Muslim people as being terrorists. And he would say something like, well, Iran's the real threat here. And then all the world would go, oh, what does he mean? What's going on with Iran? I don't know about you, but I don't really feel threatened by Iran. They've had plenty of good reason to rise up in the last year. While Netanyahu lies and says that they accidentally killed their people. Oh, it was a misfire. Another accident. You know, we just willy-nilly throw bombs into the air. He is a chief manipulator. And the United States has covered for him for years and propped him up. And this is what's going on with India right now, is that they have been putting out fake news and propaganda to prop themselves up and people are buying into it. So, so here's like what, here's the first thing that was like kind of a red flag to me. Okay. I'm going to use John MacArthur as an example, because John MacArthur, if you even say his name, your computer's going to hear you and 20 John MacArthur videos are going to come up on your YouTube newsfeed. I'm just wondering like, who were the apostles uh, publicists. Who were the, who was the handler of Jesus? Who was it that did all their marketing? When someone has to do that, what that immediately tells me, because I asked God early on, you know, do you want me to, do you want me to go on another platform, you know, have a social media page? Uh, do you want me to do some marketing? And God was very clear with me that he didn't want me doing any of that, that he would bring the people that he wanted to hear the message. So, okay, fine. And that's even, you know, with me, like not making money off of what it is that I'm doing, just wanting the message to get out there. Let's just say, you know, that alone, which obviously John MacArthur and all of these other false teachers are making tons of money, even though they call out other mega churches. I find that to be so, so ironic. So even with the goal of getting the message out there, God does not, he doesn't need me to do that. He's perfectly capable of getting the message to the people he wants to get the message to. I don't need to put on a name tag, wear a backpack and ride a bike and carry a Bible or a Book of Mormon and go knock on people's doors. God knows where he wants the message and he will get the message out there. So that's even regarding spreading the message without me having any kind of secondary gain of money. He didn't want it. He did not want me marketing. So you have to wonder, why is it that these people feel the need to market? Why do they feel the need to put out all of this propaganda? Because what, hap- what, I, what I see is that John MacArthur has all of these minions that, that I'm guessing that he commissions to go and set up YouTube pages and they play videos of false teachers and then they have a little snippet of John MacArthur so that they set him against the false teachers and that way he seems like he's... He's the one, he's, he's, he's a true teacher. Never mind the fact that he leads people to observe Sunday Sabbath. I don't know what Sunday is in the Bible, but I've never seen it there. Christmas, Easter, image of the cross, tithing, tells people that they can receive the mark of the beast and be fine and still be saved. Doesn't believe in prophets. Doesn't believe that we hear from God the way that uh, our ancestors did. I mean, why did he give us his Holy Spirit? And who told you, John MacArthur, to become a teacher? Who disciplines you? Who teaches you? Who instructs you? Like, if you're not hearing from God and you have set yourself up as a teacher, that's a scary, scary thing that you're going to be thinking about in eternity while the smoke of your torment rises forever and ever because he did not appoint you there. So this idea that you have to go market yourself and put out all of this propaganda is a, it's a huge red flag for me because I know what God has done with me. And as I started to study what's going on in India and what is the relationship between India and Israel, all of this propaganda has come up on YouTube. Not only on YouTube itself, but within the comments section. There are people worshiping and spewing propaganda about Israel, about India. Okay, so 
major red flag. And if you say anything, like, like if in the video they're saying something like, I don't know, India stands for peace, India stands for equality, and you say, um, what about your caste system? What about the little kids that are starving and dying and living on the side of the road in Calcutta? Can you explain that? And, oh, India is independent and autonomous and they're not going to be told what to do. Sounds kind of familiar, you know, that like that's the propaganda of Netanyahu. Oh, you're not going to be told what to do, but you'll take money from other nations and Christian Zionists, I see. No, you're just a little too big for your britches right now. Okay, so India is autonomous, India is independent. Then why did you hand yourself over to Israel to train your military? Because that doesn't seem autonomous or independent to me. I want to show you how low this goes, okay? How low this goes. And I'm, and I'm going to play for you what people are saying in India, their own people, what they are saying about what's going on in their own country. But let me just put a bug in your ear about how low this goes. All they have to do is tell their people that if they drink cow urine and rub cow dung on their bodies, that they will not get COVID. I hope that just made your stomach turn. And I hope that you have the sense to understand that that is demonic, that that is filthy and disgusting, that that is just like the stories that I came home with when I worked at the psych hospital. There's something very wrong about that. Can you imagine God saying to drink the urine of an idol and put its poop on your body? Anything we can do, I guess, to avoid returning to God as our healer. They have 33 million gods in Hinduism. More than 33 million gods in Hinduism and not one can save you from COVID. Not one of them can heal you. You got to put poop on you. That's how bad the propaganda and the fake news and the stupidity runs. But let me ask you something while we're all sitting here judging. What was in those pills that you used to ingest from Big Pharma? Something to think about. This is the result of idolatry. This is what you get handed over to when you worship false gods. God makes a mockery of you. Now, I want you to listen to this news clip in which this girl is going to be talking to you. She is not my establishment, as I was accused of earlier today, only listening to my establishment. I don't even listen to my establishment. I'm listening to yours. I'm listening to what your own people are saying. And I'm looking at the propaganda that is raising major red flags of why it is that India feels the need or the BJP feels the need to promote itself, to self-promote relentlessly as though they are this Messiah that we should all, you know, take advice from and submit ourselves to. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the fact that you're claiming that there should be peace, 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 but you practice the same nationalism that's going on in Israel. You have modeled yourself after the evil that's being done in Israel. Listen to what she has to say. A huge reason why India has won, uh, why the BJP has won by such a landslide is their absolute propaganda. I think it's really important to note that the one thing the BJP did right was propaganda. In India, most passive news is propaganda. And the way that they went about that was by using WhatsApp. So. Every day there are hundreds and thousands of groups where there are forwards being sent on, on people's WhatsApp groups with just fake information about the BJP. You can go to rural India and meet someone who doesn't even have electricity but has a smartphone with 4G and the, every morning their phone is flooded with pro-BJP uh, fake statistics and people will buy into that because that is the news that they are receiving. And it is sad that we are ignoring these statistics of high unemployment rates and farmer suicides, which have increased by 50% since the BJP have come back into power. And just going by somebody's charisma, I think that's a little bit sad. And with regards to the election itself, I think it's so interesting to see how it was fought more like a presidential campaign. People were not voting for the BJP, they were voting for Modi. But by putting someone like Modi at the front lines, you've also brought someone like Pragya Thakur uh, in Bhopal, who is a terrorist out on bail, 
who literally in interviews proudly stands there and says, yes, I was part of the team that broke down the Babri Masjid. And I think that's quite dangerous that you're putting these kind of people at the forefronts of society. And I think this whole concept of if not Modi, then who, this perspective kind of needs to be altered a bit because th that's not the point. This is about like human fundamental rights that just because there isn't an alternative, it doesn't mean that you do not speak up and hold power to justice. Just because you, you feel like there isn't another alternative, it doesn't mean that you allow Modi and Ahmed Shah to dictators to stand there and support hate crime, mob lynching, and make the life of all minorities in India extremely difficult. Okay, so I will say that one thing that I think that I'm going to be looking into next is when did the BJP come back into power? It looks like since 2014, but I want to understand the history a little bit. Because I, I literally, do, I mean, before God spoke this to me the other day, I didn't know anything about India. I mean, I knew about Calcutta, I knew about the kids, I've known about the caste system, but in terms of, you know, their politics or anything recent, I have not known anything. So there's something big that God is wanting to reveal to me. I wish I, I had more information to be able to give you about how this fits into biblical prophecy, but, but at the same time, I don't wish that because I know that God knows how to do this the way that he knows is best, and that is to you know, reveal what he's going to reveal in the timeline that he has deemed right. But did you hear the things that she was saying? What what she's talking about is that, you know, there's kind of this like stu stupid, foolish mentality of like, oh, well, this is the best we got. So we're not going to hold anyone accountable, right? Like that's how lazy we are now. We're just going to go along with the propaganda. We're going to be lied to. We'll just keep ingesting that wake up morning after morning and just ingest whatever the BJP is feeding us. Or another thing that people do is like, well, how many people are um, supporting this ideology, right? <laughs> like, that's what we learned from research. As long as this is normative, like, let's just go with the flow. Guys, if you're a Christian, you know that what is normative is evil. You can't go by that standard. You can't say that that's what truth is because it's normative, what about the, the door being small? What about the path being narrow? What about many are called but few are chosen? What about people are going to be put evil for good and good for evil? Christians cannot prostitute themselves to the ideas of the world that whatever is normative is what is good. Whatever is normative is what is true. Because when you do that, you just sold yourself over to falsehood. But this is what pagans do. They wake up, grab their phones, and let the world tell them what to think. Well, what else are we going to do? It's all we've got, right? Christians are supposed to know better. We're supposed to know that what we have is God alone. That we don't let the world tell us what to think. We don't let the establishment tell us what to think. The only way that I could even speak this message to you is that I am connected to God. And that is the message he spoke to me. And so now I just rend myself to, okay, what do you want to reveal about this? What do you want to show me? What do you want to show me in what's going on right now? And I know, I know that I know that I know that I know that God is going to show me where this is in the word. You know how I know that? Because he requires two witnesses, two or more witnesses. He's going to show me how this fits into biblical prophecy. This is not going to be something that I'm just going to be sitting here going, well, God spoke it to me. So, you know, you just got to take my word for it. He's not going to do that. Anything he's ever revealed to me, he always brings back to biblical prophecy. And he does it for this reason, to reveal his glory. Because I wasn't able to go to scripture and then try to form a narrative. He's showing me something, and then he's going to show me where it is in scripture. And he's done that since the day he called me to himself. But if what is occupying you is social media, the news, what everybody else is telling you to think, and then you just sort of relegate God to an afterthought, you're never going to know truth. Because that's what you decided. You decided to go with the propaganda. You decided to go with what was normative and sell yourself over to falsehood. By the way, the title of that video was, um, it's France 24 English is the, um, the page. I'm not endorsing them. That video is good, though. I appreciate being able to hear from someone who's thinking for themselves, critically thinking, is looking at this and, and, and they're going, no, the fruit's not right. The title of the video is Indian Elections, colon, the one thing that the BJP did right was propaganda.
That's pretty sad. I mean, telling, that's a very telling uh, title there. You want to know about the um, drinking urine and putting poop on you for uh, COVID to ward off COVID? <laughs> oh, goodness. That's on DW News. Fact check. How did India become a fake news hotspot? And then, of course, there's, you know, information as well regarding how Bollywood is becoming a propaganda tool. Um, so, you know, this is this shouldn't be anything new new to us. Like, we shouldn't look at this and be like, oh my gosh, India is doing that, that's terrible. The United States does it, Israel does it, everybody does it. And I think the, you know, part of what we should be taking from this, I hope maybe that you will watch that video on um, on DW News, the, the fact check, how did India become a fake news hotspot? Because the thing that I was thinking as I was watching this is how quickly counterfeit Christianity spread. Like if you are not grounded in the truth and in reality by God's spirit and his truth, the way that he says true worshipers must worship him in John 4. So if you don't know his word and you don't know his spirit, how are, what is your anchor for truth? You're going to be like a wave tossed by the wind. And so this is how counterfeit Christianity became counterfeit Christianity. People stopped being accountable. They stopped being responsible for knowing God's word and relating with his spirit. Because it's not as though knowledge is not accessible to us, guys. God gave us his spirit so we'd have knowledge, so that we'd have a counselor and we'd be instructed. He gave us his word so that we would have that information. We would have that knowledge and he would minister it to us and we would become a different being, a different creation. So we look at this, you know, I, I look at this video and I'm like, this is so foolish. Oh my gosh. There's like on the, on the little thumbnail, there's a guy with poop all over his face and his hands. And he is rubbing this into his face. That, that is what I'm looking at right now. It makes me want to puke. But then what are, what is counterfeit Christianity doing? That is the thumbnail of counterfeit Christianity. Drinking it, slathering it smelling it, letting it just soak up into them. That is the thumbnail of counterfeit Christianity. How can we look at this and say, oh, those dumb pagans? Because that's what counterfeit Christianity does. Oh, those dumb pagans. And they don't even realize how naked they are, how pitiful they are, how wretched they are, and that they're covered in dung. And that the stench of their prostitution precedes them. I think it's a profound metaphor. And there's a part, I think, either, I don't, I don't remember if it was in this movie, I think it was, where there's, there are these guys just sitting around and they grab their phones and they're all on their phones, like, you know, ingesting all of the falsehood for the day, all the propaganda for the day. It's such a profound metaphor for counterfeit Christianity. Anyway, I don't want to get too, too off topic because, you know, we're continuing, I'm continuing to discern what is the relationship between India and Israel, how, why is it that God is saying that they are prostituting themselves to Israel? It seems to me, from what God has shown me thus far, that they are modeling themselves after Israel. They want to be nationalists just like Israel. They want to annihilate, even though they go around, you know, saying everybody wants to annihilate them, they want to annihilate Muslims. They're all about the propaganda, all about the fake news, and all about leading the world. Leading the world and, and, you know, and this language of peace, 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 they say when there is no peace. God says that so many times, doesn't he? Peace, peace, they say when there is no peace. So there's this message that is like, okay, on the surface, like we're supposed to just not pay attention to what's behind the curtain. Is that, is that how it is? It's only peace when you're talking to Russia. It's only peace when you're trying to manipulate everyone else into peace, but definitely not regarding Muslims. <laughs> Uh, Pakistanis, Palestinians, no peace there. Is that right? Do I have it right? You see what I'm saying? Equality. Oh, equality. Except for those who were born into poverty, even to the extent that you're going to blame a little child for their, for the, like what they've been born into. How is that equality? There's not even equal opportunity for that child to come out of that. Okay, so um, we're going to leave it there. Moral of the story. Go back to God for truth. Use the sense he gave you because this world and counterfeit Christianity are full of baloney. They are full of cow dung and propaganda. And the only way that we're ever going to be able to have any kind of grounding in truth is very literally, we need to worship him in the spirit and in truth. That's where we need to be all the time. 
you see that, you know, I do look at the news. I do look at, you know, what is going on. I do my research, but it, I'm, it's never separate from God. I never separate from him to go entertain myself with things like this. I'm always asking him and in the middle of something, I don't care how interested I am in it or not. For the most part, I'm not really interested. It's not about that. It's more about, okay, is there any information here that you would like me to take from this? But I, if, if there's nothing going on, like I'm not feeling God moving me to understand something, I will shut it off because that just tells me that he, there's nothing there that he wants to direct my attention to. So in order to be able to track with him that way, I need to have a relationship with him. I need to be in step. I need to be dealing with my own stuff so that I know the difference between my thoughts and God's leadership. And also so that I know how to instruct my thoughts, how to take my thoughts captive and make them obedient to God rather than de the desires of my own flesh, whether that be for glory, whether it be for a story, whatever it is, I just can't live that way anymore. It's, it's got to only be about truth. If you do that, if you keep doing that, that's going to become normative for you so that, you know, go, trying to put together a story, trying to put together pieces and living in your carnality, that will no longer be normative to you. And when you pop back into your flesh, it's going to feel so terrible. Like you're, you're going to be upset by it. It's not going to feel right to you. But crossing over into that new way of living where you're living in the heart and spirit and you're connected to God is, um, there's a learning curve. It's going to take a minute for you to learn how to live there. But we have to do the work to, to do that. Please discern this message with God.